Hi everybody, it's Devin here at Predatory Plants doing a species spotlight today about Nepenthes talangensis. It's a beautiful highlander from Sumatra. It's found at elevations as high as 2,500 meters, which is around 8,000 feet. It's a little bit of a tricky plant, but I might have some tricks for people who are having difficulty getting it to pitcher. It's really worth uh, figuring out how to grow it because it's pretty unique looking and really beautiful. The peristome is deeply set uh, with a nice red color, so it goes far into the pitcher body as you can see. There's a nice shape to the pitcher, kind of like a wine glass tapered shape, and it's nicely speckled. It communicates those traits pretty well to its offspring, which makes it one of the best hybridizers in the genus, in my opinion. Uh, some of our favorite hybrids that we've made, and also a lot that we buy, use Nepenthes talangensis. This is actually our male clone, Nepenthes triumph, which we've used in hybrids like uh, Nepenthes dream of triumph and titanic triumph. Uh, Nepenthes talangensis has a reputation for being difficult to pitcher, and ours tend to pitch your best in the summertime. So starting sometime around July, they will swell up and then we get a nice little bouquet of pitchers leading into the autumn. It's October now and in the Bay Area that's basically the end of summer still. And so it's looking really great. In the winter time the pitchers tend to die uh, or shrivel up and it doesn't make more pitchers again until next summer. This seems to be a trait that is shared with a number of Highlanders like uh, Nepenthes dubia and Inermis. Uh, essentially these kind of smaller, highly modified pitchers. Uh, a lot of them are from Sumatra. And so we've been experimenting with growing them a bit warmer. So if you have got Nepenthes talangensis in an ultra highland situation, like where you might grow Nepenthes hamada, it may actually be too cold for this plant. So try moving it out into an intermediate room, uh, which is what we're actually doing with some of these over the winter. Our warm room is more of a warm intermediate room, and we're gonna see if we can get it to keep pitchering throughout the season. Um, another thing to consider is that with this highly developed peristome, it may need higher average humidity and perhaps a bit more water. There's been research that suggests that plants with highly developed peristomes only occur in areas that are wetter than others, so it's like where it's consistently humid and wet, uh, because that's what those peristomes need to function as traps. So uh, again, it may just be a, a high humidity, warmer temperatures, maybe a little bit of a more aggressive watering schedule. Uh, try that out and see if it can uh, help your plant pitcher more if you're having trouble. One of the reasons we really like this particular plant is that it flowers quite a lot. So this is one of the basils that's got some active pollen on it. Uh, as I said, this is one of our favorite hybridizers. Uh, but then we've got a spent flower stalk here. And if we go up the vine, because this is a very viney species, uh, we've got quite a few more. There's one, there's two, three, uh, there's four, five up here. Uh, and so it flowers a lot for us, and sometimes it seems like the flowering keeps it from pitchering. We've got an upper pitcher forming right here, uh, but I don't know when that'll actually pop, and so I decided to just make the video today. One interesting characteristic about Nepenthes talangensis is that it has this sort of fuzz uh, at the nodes that is a little bit frustrating because it sometimes looks like uh, mealybug detritus. And so you should check your plant carefully because it can get mealies. So this plant had mealies a bit ago. We treated them, it's fine. But that is mealybug leavings. But right here, this fuzziness, which is usually how you diagnose mealybugs, that's just the plant. And so uh, keep an eye on that because uh, that can, uh, you, know, you don't want mealies in your, in your collection by any means. I mentioned that this plant likes to grow warm, but there is a limit to that. Uh, these spots here are the product of a really bad heat wave we had about a month ago uh, where the temperatures in the greenhouse got up to uh, like 115 degrees. Um, this is still a Highlander, right? Like even though I said it likes to grow a bit warmer, it is a Highlander. Uh, that's, that damage is, is, is superficial. Um, it'll, it'll go away, it'll grow past it. Um, so if you see stuff that looks like this on your Highlanders, it could be heat stress. Uh, check that out before freaking out over viruses or fungus or whatever. Um, but like I said, it likes to grow warm, not scalding hot. So, it's a very nice species. It's worth giving it a shot. Um, and if you're having trouble with it, like I said, try growing a bit warmer, a bit more humidity. Um, we really like ours. Uh, we're looking forward to doing more breeding with it because like I said, it's a great hybridizer. But uh, that is Nepenthes talangensis. It's a beautiful plant. It's worth figuring out. Uh, and it's a great addition to a serious Highland collection. Let me know if you have any more species that you'd like us to feature. And uh, remember to like and subscribe to see more videos. Take it easy.